Yeah, you have to cover a lot of ground. It's uh, with a few, very few exceptions, you're not recruiting the same guys at Dayton that you are at Indiana. So, um, you know, guys are talking to me about players who I've heard their reputations, but I haven't seen them before. So, you know, the next two weekends, obviously, it's good. You have all four guys out, and um, you just got to cover a lot of ground, see a lot of different guys. You, you rely on some of your relationships um, that you had in the past, talking to different high school and AU coaches. Um, obviously, we've made it's been well documented. We've made a lot of rounds in the state of Indiana, starting from there and kind of building from the inside out. Um, but uh, seeing, you know, it's a big class, as everyone knows. And uh, but again, you have to. It's no different where you're at. You got to find the right fit. Um, you got to find that the guy who fits the program, who fits the community, the university, and obviously the the head coach as well. So what is the right fit, both as a player and as a person? That's a good, you know, that's, that's good. You know, everyone talks about the word culture, and um, sometimes it's almost become cliche now, but it's, uh, but it, it is. It's, you know, you, you, everyone says culture, 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 then you see a really talented guy, and you say, well, he's really talented, but... And, and then are you really doing talking about your culture there? So it's, um, you know, there's definitely you have to have a level of talent uh, uh, to, to play at Indiana and in the Big Ten and succeed. But also you have to find a, a guy who the coaching staff and most importantly Coach Miller uh, connects with and who will fit and kind of uh, mesh with his personality. I think that's really important. And, uh, you know, things like hard work and character and uh, passion, those are, those are all talents as well. And it's not just about running and jumping and shooting, which are, they are very important as well. But I think we've we've kind of learned um, over the years, our staff has learned from over the years, is uh, there's a lot that comes into that. Um, and then, you know, obviously someone who embraces the uh, expectations and the community of the Indiana Hoosiers. Jeff from Terry. What's uh, as far as uh, Um, I don't think that's been decided right now here at Indiana. We haven't talked about that. We've had a lot of things going on that will obviously will be. I know at, at, at Dayton it wasn't as much guards and bigs. It was more um, a little bit of offense, a little bit of defense, you know, a guy who focused. And it's not as specialized as you guys know. It's not specialized like football where, you know, you're in charge of just the defense. It's not like that. You're only dealing with 13 guys, 12, 13 guys. So it's, um, it's more collaborative than it would be in football. But, um, you know, it, you have a guy who focuses maybe more on the offense, a guy who focuses a little bit more on the defense, a guy who focuses maybe on rebounding or underneath out of bounds, side out of bounds, things like that. But it's, um, I, I would say, you know, even though in Dayton I was more focusing on offense, it doesn't mean I didn't look at the defense or talk about the defense and vice versa, the guy who was in charge of the defense. It's not like, you know, during a game, if he saw a player, a situation that <coughs> may work, he can suggest it. And that's, it's, it's more collaborative, I think, than, than, than anything else. Talk about your own opportunity coming to Indiana, and, and after Archie gets hired, I mean, uh, the process and how quickly you knew that you were going to be coming in as well. Um, well, it's an unbelievable opportunity. It's an opportunity I've, I, I can't be, uh, couldn't have more gratitude towards. To be, a, I, I'm a graduate of the University of Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota, so I know a lot about Indiana and their tradition and the, the power of the brand, and um, so. That's a special, special opportunity, and I'm very thankful. Um, I'm sure just like you guys, I didn't get here by accident. I had a lot of help along the way. Um, I'm sure you guys that be where you're at had some help along the way, and I'm, not, I'm very mindful of that, that I didn't, uh, for a guy who was a very average basketball player and who just loved the game and who tried to put his head down and work, I had to have some people who helped me, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, the process, I, I interviewed for the head coaching job at Dayton. Um, I clearly didn't get it, otherwise I probably wouldn't be here right now. But uh, um, So that, that process took about a week or 10 days. Um, Coach Miller was kind enough to say, you know, really support me in that process and, you know, uh, try to help me. Um, so I did that. And then, uh, you know, he, he basically said, you know, whatever happens, you have an opportunity to come by you uh, when, when the timing's right. So when, when he got the job, obviously it's, you know, it, it affects a lot of people, some good, some bad. You know, anytime there's a coaching change, um, uh, it affects just numerous, numerous people. Again, some very positive, some very negative, some kind of in between. But, you know, what happens, you know, I have a wife and three small children, and, you know, she was 
as most wives do, asking a lot of questions and um, asking, you know, what, what do you think is going to happen? And so we, we went through the process, the Dayton process, and Coach Miller, again, was very, very patient, supportive of that process. And then um, when, when that didn't work out, um, you know, we, we kind of moved on to, into Bloomington. Tom, as closely as you've worked with Archie, how would you describe his leadership style, particularly in his times as a coach? Um, what you got, what one of his one of his many great strengths, he's um, unapologetically who he is every day. The person you see is not different than the person I see, the, the person the players see, the different person the donors see, or the, the athletic director, the president. He is who he is. There, there's, um, he's, he's as genuine and as real as it gets. And he is who he is regardless <laughs> of the previous outcome, which could be very positive, it could be at times negative. Um, it's probably well documented. We went through some adversity at Dayton off the court, um, and, and again, he, he's that's when his leadership skills really, really shine. I mean, you, you find out, you know, who someone is in times of adversity, and we faced some adverse times. We obviously had some really good times at Dayton as well. But um, his as a leader, when things aren't going well, he just rises to the top. Um, but what you guys will notice, and what everyone will find out, is. He is the same guy every day. He is there, there, there's is as genuine as real as it gets, and um, that's no matter who his audience may be at the time. Coach, you worked with Bill Donovan, Coach Donovan, really in early in your career here, freshman at Florida. Of course, he's now at the NBA Coach of the Thunder. What did you learn from him during that time you spent as a member of his staff, and how did that shape uh, your approach to your coaching duties? Um, the number one thing you figured out about Billy is no matter if it was a first year at Florida or I joined him in the second year, I should say, or after we came off, you know, the, Nash, the Final Four or whatever the case may be, um, it just nothing can duplicate or nothing replace work. You, you work and you put your head down, you treat people right, um, you surround yourself with passionate, loyal, and bright people, you solicit their opinions, and but more and, and you work. Um, he's a one of the similarities I'd say Archie and Billy have is they're deep thinkers. They put a lot of they put a lot of thought into things. There's nothing, no decision, big or small, is like a spur of the moment. That, you know, let's just go with it. It's not it's not a whim decision. Um, they both think, they both feel in their hearts, and they're usually right, if not always right, that if I put enough thought, if I put enough time into this, if I ask enough people that I trust their opinions, and that I can come, and they have this great talent of putting all. 15, 20, 10 people, whatever, um, people's opinions in this barrel, and they kind of mix it all up, and they come up with the right decision almost all the time, and uh, that's a great talent. But with, with Billy, it's just um, nothing. Deep thought, getting a lot of people's opinions that you trust, and then uh, just put your head down and work, treat people the right way, and have a lot of passion and love what you do, no matter, again, what the situation you may be in, and it usually works out for the best. Well, it's clearly important, and it's clearly, I think, um, you know, it's, it's again, it's I'm sure a lot of coaches in a lot of different sports and a lot of different great institutions will say the same thing, but you, you build kind of from the inside out, and you start in this great state with the great coaching and the great players. Um, did we hit every school in the state? Obviously, we did, but we tried our best to get as many as we can, and we'll continue to do that. And, uh, and I think, you know, again, uh, you, used to, you build equity in the relationships, um, which is just kind of, you know, whether you're recruiting or just the business or anything else, that you know whether a uh, coach has a good player that's good enough to be in the end or down, you treat them right. You, they're always welcome to come to practice. They're welcome to games. And, and you kind of embrace them with open arms, whether they have good players or not, and just uh, show a lot of respect because the coaching in the state is unbelievable. Um, it's as good as it gets. And um, I, I think, you know, you start that way. And, you know, the people I've encountered in the short time, they want Indiana to do well. You know, most of them are Indiana fans. Most of them are, are supporters of Indiana. So if you start with that premise that they want to see you succeed and you treat them right and treat them with respect and um, uh, don't treat them the same way, like I said before, treat them the same way whether they have a, a great player or they don't have a great player. And 
then you build again from the from the inside out, and that's uh, yeah. But if you're if you're at Indiana and you represent this great university, you um, I think you start from the in, you start with the state of Indiana with all its great talent and great coaching. Um, kids are resilient, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a, you know, there's a, whenever there's a coaching, just at Dayton, you know, when I talk to the guys there at Dayton, you know, they're resilient. They, they kind of, um, even like when you lose a game, they get over the game quicker than the, the coaching staff does. They kind of move on to the next play a little bit faster. That's just the way society is. And that's the way kids are, you know, when you're 18 to 23 years old, you know, your, your worries probably don't uh, burden you as much as they do when you're a little bit older. So, uh, but they've been great. They've been awesome. They, they've uh, worked really hard. They've done everything. You know, they've bought in. They've, you know, in a short period of time, they've come to try to trust us and um, do as we ask them to do. Um, and, and their attitudes and just their um, body language and things like that have all, have all been just terrific.